Hey guys, still there and welcome back to Wargame. Today it's not going to be Wargame as usual because this is a mod highlight. This is the mod called Wargame 1991. Let me read you the description of the mod. It's 1991 and communism didn't fall and now the world stands on the brink of war. Wargame 1991 is an extensive modification of Wargame Red Dragon that updates each nation's arsenal to their 1991 capabilities. The armory is no longer filled with rusting T-34s and prototypes abandoned in the 1970s. Instead, troops are armed with the most modern equipment their armies could field. Infantry carry modern rifles and cutting-edge anti-tank weapons. Tanks load the most powerful rounds their nation can produce, sorry, can procure. And planes bristle with high-tech weapons and jammers. Each nation has been reworked to be both a realistic picture of its real-world capabilities and function as a standalone fighting force. Major features include The Netherlands are joined by 17 Belgian and Luxembourgish units, uh, units, <laughs> units forming the Benelux. Australia and New Zealand, so what we normally would call ANZAC, are joined by 20 units from Malaysia and Singapore, and they're known as ANZMYS, representing a part of the Five Powers Defense Arrangement. A hard cutoff from December 1991. Nations will fight with what they had, not super tanks from the late 1990s, with allowances made for Czechoslovakia, East Germany and Poland. So what I'm going to do now is just browse through the armory, because you're going to see some really different units over here. For starters, um, the tanks that you normally would see, Leopard 2A5, no longer there. Challenger 2, no longer there. Um, looking at, let's say, the T80UM, uh, no longer there. The T80U is, and that's the latest unit from 1991. Now, one of the other things that this mod also does, beside from uh, limiting it to 1991 and changing various units, is changing the unit icons, or at least part of the icons, such as the main gun indicators. Now, some of these things look really, really good. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on every single nation. This is more going to be a bird's eye view of what you can expect. First, we're going to go through blue for quickly. Um, let's see, let's switch to... All blue for all units, starting with logistics. Logistics generally doesn't have too many differences. All you can see here are units which are pretty much the same as expected. Um, yeah, let's not linger here. Infantry. You can definitely see some changes here. For example, this is the Airborne. They come with the CH-47C. Nothing too special there, but as you can see, some of the unit icons, such as the Carl Gustav M2, have been subtly adjusted. We also got the, uh, I'm going to try and take a stab at this, Oscar Berpe, Berperisai. I hope that I pronounced that correctly. These guys come in stormers, but stormers with 20mm Orlikans on top of them. So not your average stormer that you normally pay 5 points for. Now these things actually come with a pretty dangerous autocannon. Assault engineers, nothing too stellar there. Um, we got the Assaultman. These are what you would formerly call the, um, oh, what are they called again? The small troopers from the US Marines. As you can see, some of their transports have also been slightly renamed. You got the Humvee, the LAV-25, but then you got the AAVP-7 and the AAVP-7A1 with the grenade launcher. We got the twin UE and we got the CH-46 Echo Sea Knight. Moving on, Barkan uh, with the Nagmash, enough. Um, here, another one. This is the BBE Marns. In case you thought that the standard uh, Dutch, uh, what are they called? The um, Mariniers are bad, the Corps Mariniers. These are even worse. These are the BBE, which is a unit that has. Um, currently been disbanded slash uh, absorbed by another unit. Its proper translation, I suppose, would be the uh, Special Assistance Unit. And it is, in the Netherlands, sometimes deployed as a uh, counter-terrorism force. They do the most dangerous arrests. They go on counter-terrorism ops. Um, hostage situations, I believe, is also their domain, or was. As you can see, they carry an Uzi, very accurate for an SMG, that is. Code custom M2 and a mag, but they're a 15-man elite squad. And of course, you're going to be paying for that quite heavily. 
Still, though, at 40 points, they're not that bad. Considering that, let's see. Um, for these, you'd be training 25, but then again, well, you would get an autocannon. Uh, we got the uh, Bornholmsvernet. These guys are armed with an assault rifle and, of course, a Krell Gustav. But interestingly, they're a 15-man shock squad. It's stuff like that that you don't see every day. Come with the Laro or the Lynx Mark 80. I believe they used the Dutch unit model for that. Or former. Although there is... No. Doesn't have the Dutch flag on it. Oh, well. Moving on, uh, Chasseur. You can see the Chasseur have a different icon for the Alrek F1 and for the FAMAS. Really nice details there. Chasseur Ardennais. These are one of the um, Dutch, correction, Benelux units, infantry units. Same as the uh, BBE Marns, as you saw. They're all right. 10 strength, regular training, uh, RL83, which is a little subpar. They're from 1991. It is accurate, its range is limited, and its AP is only 14. So, pretty much your standard regular troop. Commander Marines, come in the Cougar, uh, also come in the Puma. Unfortunately, still no autocannon on these things. Because that is something that I think that the Commando Marine could use. And for the more observant of you, uh, yes, the Appalas icon has changed as well. Falskam Jaeger, nothing too special. Uh, Frument. What is that? That's an assault rifle. And a really accurate assault rifle at that. These are elite troops, 10-man squad. Cost you 30 points plus transport. So definitely going to be on the more expensive end. But those carry the Carl Gustav. Unfortunately, again, not very high AP. However, keep in mind that 19 is really not that bad nowadays. If you're looking at the most heavily armored tank that the um, NATO can field, that's the Challenger Mark III. This thing has 20 frontal armor and, interestingly, 19 AP, meaning that it is not capable of dealing damage to itself. Anyway, more on the tanks in a bit. Back to the infantry. And I'm going to have to take care of Challenger or it won't actually sort anything. Now, what other units stand out? Uh, uh, 90 or sorry, 89 Shiki FV, pretty much your standard <coughs> um, IFV there. The HV016, MP5, Carl Gustav M2, and then MG3. Shock troops don't do any damage against AP, but definitely do damage against infantry. Nine rounds of that. And keep in mind, they're not five man squads, they're not that easy to deal with. This could very well be the. the um, uh, Norwegian answer to the Spatsnaz. Now the Javelin, again, changed unit icon. Uh, Stingers, I believe they're the same unit icons. Jagd Commando. These guys are impressive. They're impressive because they carry 10 of those anti-guided anti-tank weapons. Or anti-guided, guided anti-tank anti weapons, ATGM. 10 of them, that's a hell of a lot of ammo. Most troops don't carry that much. They got access to the uh, MG113, or the M113, but also, and I think that this uh, unit card is not quite right, the Martyr 1A, 1A2. I think that should be 1A2. Javelins, more infantry, more infantry. Uh, Cannon Lag, again, HE, but these guys also have AP, 19. Crow Augusta, five man squad, just your support unit. Commando B1, German Special Forces, PCF3, 24 AP. This is going to make a hell of a dent in any tank that you come up against. Also the G11, which um, I think, despite the unit description, or sorry, the mod description, is in fact a weapon that never made it into service. Although I'm not exactly 100% on that. Constable Gruppe. What else do we have? Yep, here's the Dutch standard marines, although they're now a shock level train squad, not elite, as they once were. And, well, I'm sorry, but the M72A3 law is just no longer as effective. Kusjegre, uh, yeah, I can keep scrolling here forever because you got so many different units to pick from. I mean, this is just NATO. 
<clears throat> um, something that jumps out at me. Not really in this section. Now let's move on to some more interesting stuff. Um, artillery wise, <clears throat> the Japanese get the 67 Shiki. Long range HE weapon. Only fires two charges, but does a hell of a lot of damage. It's 16. And you can, you're going to see with this mod that some of these units have been changed quite a bit. And that they have capabilities which you normally wouldn't see. Commando Mortar, for example. What the hell is that? This is a very mobile mortar unit. Carries a decent amount of rounds. 3 HE. Rate of fire is pretty good at 18 rounds a minute. And... Um, 81mm mortar rounds, well, it's, it, 3 HE is not that bad. But especially these guys can be very, very mobile. And on top of that, they're amphibious. Dracon, I believe, is standard. Hasn't been changed. GDF-002 Porte. British anti-air truck. This thing does very, very respectable accuracy against aerial targets. They also have the radar tag, so they can be radar guided. But I believe that you can turn these things off, meaning that they are still going to be firing, but at less efficiency, so less accuracy. Um, what the hell? This is a mortar that comes equipped with an autocannon. You're going to see some of these weird combinations that normal wargame just doesn't have. And that's what I really like about this mod. It has some stuff that you just don't really see in any other mod. For example, the GSRS. And it's not just this unit that does it, but other units as well. Now I'm going to give you a sec to look at this unit card and tell me what's weird about it. What's not quite right here? What normally don't we see on these cards? For those of you who are saying, hey, this thing can fire HE and AP, exactly. You can pick. What do you want to fire at a target? Do you want to fire HE rounds, nor or more of them, or do you want to fire AP? I'm not sure how this works. I'm not sure what they fire. I think you're going to have to pick one and disable the other. But I haven't been playing around with it that much. There's still so much to discover about this mod. So stuff like that, we'll just have to look at in greater detail eventually. Um, other units that jump out. Yeah, here's the Mars, for example. Um, just a German variant of it. Does exactly the same thing. Fires AP and HE. Lars 2 can do the same thing. However, hold on, can you do it too? Nope, you can do it. You can. Smoke! These things can deploy smoke at a range of 25 kilometers. That can really help out your forces. If you're in a pinch and you really need smoke quickly, just send your Lars 2 to do it. LRM, same deal, can fire cluster and HE. Um, moving on. Yes, this is where it gets interesting. You all know the Avenger, right? Anti-air jeep, nothing stellar. How about making an anti-air unit air mobile? This is an M1097 Avenger that you can drop from a helo. And that all of a sudden makes your anti-air a heck of a lot more mobile. You're going to see these combinations more often. Not so much dropping AA, but also dropping other units. And that, I think, is awesome about this mod. Um, this is another interesting one. M109A3BE. It's a mortar, sorry, it's a howitzer that fires both HE and smoke rounds, but how about firing a cluster round? Why the hell not? Why not just drop one or two cluster shells on top of the enemy, very specifically? It's not a large blanket weapon like, for example, the uh, Lars or the Mars. It's a more of a sniper unit in that sense, with good range at that. And there are some more units which have that capability. ADATS uh, doesn't look changed to me. There's the M270 again. There's the MLRS. It seems like almost every nation has one of these now. Or at least every coalition. Yep, here's another one. The RAM TCM. 
airdropped from a Yasur. Yasur, unfortunately, not a Yasur Nimrod, just a Yasur standard with a mag. Still, dropping an anti air Jeep, which is very mobile of its own already. I mean, 800 kilometers autonomy, 95 kph off road, and then airlifting it, you can get these units in some very unexpected places. Um, what other units am I forgetting? I'm probably skipping over stuff because I just want to keep this thing not too long. Otherwise, I'm going to be here for uh, several hours. Tanks. Now, as I mentioned previous, some tanks have been removed from the game. Other tanks are changed. Here's a tank, again, like the Challenger. 20 frontal armor, 19 AP. If you were to come up against a similar 90 Shiki, you just couldn't damage it. So you're going to have to find other ways to damage those units. K188 tank. This thing comes with two machine guns, the KM680 or 68A1, 17 foot armor. It's not that special actually. Leopard 2A4 NL. Very advanced tank for the day and age. But again, no 2A5s. And with a 1HA. I think this might be the most heavily armored tank. 21 frontal armor. 65% accuracy, 20 AP. Again, this thing cannot kill itself. Well, it can if you get closer, but not at max range. Megach 7 Aleph. Interesting turret design. I think normally... I'm not really sure. I don't play Israel that often, but normally you don't see these things too often. Look at that side armor. 12 points of side armor. That really shows you how much the Israeli units are hell-bent on keeping their units alive. Now with Reki you're going to find some weird, weird units. How about airdropping a reconnaissance unit? Like a 73 Shika Jeep. It comes with a CH-47J, which does make it more expensive, but hey, I'll happily pay 35 points for that. If I can airlift my unit over there, sure. We also got the 74 Shiki Seko Japanese reconnaissance uh, tank. Little Bird. Uh, this Little Bird packs a punch, by the way. Carries a twin M134 minigun and a couple of fin folding aerial rockets. Alpinistim. Look at that. Sniper rifle. Crow Gustav and an M16. Shock trained. Very good stealth. Very good optics. Nice. Um. Sniper team with an MD2 Barrett. I have seen people do some very nice things or very unnice things <laughs> with a sniper rifle that big. Scimitar. A 1.25 AG. That's unusual. Delta snipers. Oh dear me. Delta snipers is a two-man sniper group with an XM4 submod and an M82 Barrett. These are very, very accurate with their main weapon, but keep in mind there's only two guys. And of course, with that sniper rifle, they can massacre high-value targets. Interestingly, you no longer just have the options of dropping them off with Black Hawks or... Or actually, normally, I don't think it's a Black Hawk. It is the MH60, but I'm not sure if they call it a Black Hawk there too. They also have the option of using the Little Bird, which is, well, to me it makes far more sense dropping off a sniper team with the Little Bird, which is a far smaller helicopter, than going in by Black Hawk. You can also get them with the Humvee, either with the standard version of the grenade launcher. Dragons. MP5SD. These guys carry quite a lot of weaponry for a two-man group. Two guys, elite, exceptional stealth. It is a sniper team. They come with an MP5SD, an AT4, only two charges, and an FRF2 sniper rifle. Look at that accuracy. Oh. Falskamiegere. Carry the PSG90. Uh, ESR GVP with a P90. An M72A3 Law. And the Model 32 sniper rifle again. Force Recon. Man, there's so much stuff to go over. Oh yeah. I came across this one when I was looking through it earlier. 
You know the striker? Yeah, normally it's not that dangerous. How about you put very good optics and medium stealth on a striker? And you give it 2625 meter range. How about now? Right now, this becomes a very, very dangerous unit. It is... Uh, <laughs> it's not going to be fun encountering one of these things. Also, the Spartan MCT is a 35-point reconnaissance unit, but it comes with a hell of a bite. Milan F2s, 50% accuracy, 22 AP. Hell of a lot of damage. Here's another British aerial reconnaissance unit, slash a British ground recon unit dropped off by air. Another recon unit dropped off by Chinook. Uh, the thing that I want to scroll towards is uh, this... You know the Leopard 2A4? The one I just showed you? Yeah, it gets better. This thing can spot for itself. It has the same stats as the Leopard 2A4, but it has good optics versus medium optics. This thing is going to be very, very dangerous. It's pretty much the Benelux equivalent to what you can see on the M84AN from uh, Vanilla. Well, Mostly vanilla, that is, if you don't use any, uh, no, sorry, if you do use some of the additional nation packs. Kiowa A hip with Hellfires. This must have been a hell of a lot of work renaming these units. Finding all the right unit cards, or changing the unit cards, that is. Changing their weapons, come up with stats, balancing. Oh, the Germans have them too, by the way. Leopard 2A4 Recon. More sniper teams uh, in the form of the sniper debt, which I think is sniper detachment. I think I'm going to have to cut this video up into two parts because I'm never going to get through Red Four as well. <laughs> All right, um, sixty-one Shiki Renzo, one hundred six millimeter. I think it is pretty much unchanged unit-wise. It just has a different weapon icon for the recoilless rifle there. Now you're also going to see transports in here, so I'm going to go through this quickly because there's not that much difference here. At least not that I know of. Though the Commando 90, Commando 90 millimeter, um, no, that's also been there. Sorry, sometimes it takes me a second to browse through my brain and see if any of these 1542 units <laughs> look familiar. To the base war game. Oh, the Israelis still get the Pere? Impressive. I think that this might be one of the most powerful anti tank weapons in the field. Hamer Maypats. Again, how about dropping a, a Humvee, but this time with an anti tank weapon from a Yasur? We're going to be seeing all sorts of weird shit happening in this game. KM-900, LVTP ATA-1, TOW-2 A missiles, <coughs> that's a lot of destructive capability you got there. So many units, M2A-2 Bradley, Bushmaster icon has been changed, TOW-2 A missiles, stats are I believe the same as they always were. Humvee Tow 2. The Dutch, sorry, the Benelux, get a Humvee Tow 2. Nice. Another Humvee Tow 2 that this time you can drop with a Sea Stallion. Mortar 1A2. Yeah, we're going to have to be playing around with this mod. Why the hell would you want to be dropping a Ram AT from a Yasur? This I don't get. Sure, it has a decent amount of firepower, but it's also wiped out in one shot, especially considering the ground range is worse than what a tank is going to be using to shoot back at you. Why would I want this thing to be airlifted? Ramsir. Oh yeah, the Rover Scud Hunter. This is a Rover Reconnaissance... No, sorry, it's a Rover Vehicle. Uh, comes with six Milan F2s. Very mobile, of course, being a little Jeep. Not amphibious, unfortunately, but it could be a very nasty unit to have roaming around behind your lines. Rover Wombats, Rover Milan 2, everything gets airlifted by Chinooks. Um, 
Ah, the weasel won. Ah, yeah, still with a terrible autonomy. Which, considering you can airlift them, might make them valuable. Because they do carry the tow 2. See, the weasel tow 2 itself is a good unit. It's just very much hampered by its inability to get anywhere. If you put it in a CH-53G, that situation changes dramatically and all of a sudden you can field these. Alright, let's have a look at the helicopters. AH-1S Sea Knight. I don't think much has been changed about this particular unit. Let's see what the Sea Cobras come with. Sea Cobras now come with AIM-9M. No longer do these things carry seed missiles, it's just air-to-air. -air, as I remember them from Wargame back before the day that they changed it. Now loads and loads and loads of helicopters of course, but most of these are transport helos. I like how they gave the Chinook all sorts of different looks. 53G, Cougars, Fennec, oh, Fennec, Fennec Toe 2, yep, same as always. M60, or uh, sorry, MH60L DAP, four stingers, so this again has been changed to the air-to-air -air variant, as it was, but it also carries the miniguns and the twin M230. Come up against one of these if you're infantry and you're going to be in trouble. Hmm? This is a reconnaissance Blackhawk. This is a Blackhawk with good optics. Where would you find that? Is that a uh, US reconnaissance unit? Yep. Delta snipers. Or at least... Well, just... Maybe not just the Delta snipers. Um... Correction, just the Delta Sniper seem to come with the MH-60L Blackhawk recon helicopter. Good optics. Drop these guys off and you'll have very good optics all of a sudden. This thing unfortunately has poor stealth, which, well, it's a helicopter, it's to be expected. But interesting to see medium, sorry, good optics on a helo. Alright, let's wrap it up with the uh, recon. I think we, sorry, um, helos. I think we had most of them already. Air power. We got the A10A Thunderbolt 2. Look at that icon for the Avenger. Wow. And we got the A10 Lasty. The A10 Lasty does not come armed with the Maverick, but it does come with more rocket pods. Or sorry, rocket pods in general, because this one doesn't carry them at all. So this is more of a general ground support aircraft. And... It does carry the same amount of 30 millimeter rounds. Which, considering that extreme rate of fire, I don't think you're going to get too many salvos out of that. Uh, let's unpin that. Dragonfly. These. Yeah, these are the slowed down HE bombs, the retarded HE bombs. Um, I don't think it really says it, but they are being slowed down by a parachute just before they land. So they're going to detonate, I think, a little later than the napalm, or just about at the same time. Now let's see if anything stands out here. As of yet, not so much. Hold on. A6E tram. I think that this might be the replacement for the tram intruder, as the A6E tram comes with two 20HE walleye missiles, laser guided bombs. Interesting. Never thought you could repurpose the A6E for that, but sure. Corsair 2, four 1000 kilogram bombs. What is this? The AJ-37 Vigan. I mean, I know the plane, but what is it dropping? It's dropping all of those retarded HE bombs, so these things are again slowed down. 3.5 kilometer range, 45% accuracy, 5 HE apiece. 
I'm not exactly sure why they were looking at eight on one side and eight on the other. You could argue it just has 16, but there must be some sort of change here. Maybe so they can release the bombs faster. The hum, sorry, the um, Harrier Knight attack. Equalizer, Hydra, and Sidearm. This is a seed plane. Well, that's not strictly true. It's a seed plane with rocket pods. We're going to have to relearn the game all over again. Uh, anything else that looks different? Oh, the Prowler's still there. Tomcat... Oh, what? We now have two Tomcats, gentlemen. We have the Tomcat air-to-air, -air, which no longer carries those 11 to 14 kilometer range missiles, depending on which version of Wargame or mod you ask. But it carries the Sparrows, at a range of 7.7. .7. You also have the F-14B, which carries four 500 kilogram bombs. Interesting change. And it can also defend itself, although it is not really designed in the air-to-air -air role, despite what the unit card might say. The Baz, the Enhanced Eagle, four MRAMs. Strike Eagle. Oh, they changed the Strike Eagle. Normally, the Strike Eagle drops a couple of... Or actually, that's the 15D, not the 15E. The F-15D drops four 1,000 kilogram bombs. This thing drops 12 cluster bombs. That's going to be destructive against enemy armor. Maverick, the Peace Carven. Well, you can definitely carve out some peace if you have 12 kilo or 12 cluster bombs on you. OCU. An F-16A-10 with rocket pods, but they're heat rocket pods. This could be a... sorry, not a Dutch, I was about to say Dutch, but a Benelux anti-tank weapon. Because with those rocket pods, you're always going to be doing some damage since they're heat. I just don't think it's going to be firing all 70 at once. Or rather, I hope not. Victory Falcon. Six short-range air-to-air missiles. Uh, we got the F-16CG and the F-16C. This one drops cluster bombs and this thing fires two anti-tank missiles. Nice. The F-4E Pave Spike, three and a half kilometer range. I think laser guided bomb. Yep. Kurnas, Sparrows, Snake Eye. Hmm? The F-4E Phantom II usually just drops napalm. But this time around, it really wants to make sure that you're dead. So it drops napalm on top of you and a couple of Mark 82 Snake Eyes. F-4 FKWSLA. Also known... Well, not really. It's not really a Peace Rhine. The Peace Rhine's been repurposed to be a bomber. And this one is now an anti-tank plane. Right. What other weird changes you got? The F-18A, long-range fighter jet. Hornet. You put napalm on a hornet? Don't you think that's a little weird? Right. Fortunately, the hornet with the anti-tank weapons is also still there. Rocket pods. Somehow they stripped off the main weapon, so the, the gun, the twin Aiden from these Harriers, the GR5 and the 7. This one comes with a laser guided bomb. This one comes with just a couple of retarded bombs. What do you do? I'm going to have to test this aircraft out. The J. 32E Storlansen. No weapons. Exceptional air detection. Speed is low. Very good stealth. What the hell do you do? 
If any of you has more information on the Sturlensen, then let me know down below in the comments. The Israeli drop the Tall 2 cluster bomb. What else do we have? Mirage F1 CR. That's a laser guided bomb. Again, with a very different icon. Every laser guided bomb now looks different, depending on make and model. Beluga. The Phantom FGR2. If you really have a problem with enemy armor, then this is what you drop. Because it's going to stun the hell out of units with those Mark 13s and then rain death with the cluster bombs. RF 111C, four 1000 kilogram bombs, always reliable. If you need something more specifically dead, go with the F 111C with two Payfoy 2s, laser guided. RF 4E is another bomber for the Germans, HE and Cluster. Draken, Sea Harrier. You put a twin mag on an aircraft? What the hell? 0.5 HE. What do you think this thing is going to be good for? Because if you're dogfighting? Nah, it's not a dogfighter. I think they might have just had some of those mags spare and decided to put them on an aircraft. But other than that, I don't really see why exactly you'd have them. SK-60C, this thing normally comes with that weird long range, um, just point in the general direction and hope that you hit something missile. This time around it comes with the Panzersprangraket, which is a heat rocket pod. 12 AP, just carries 6, but its accuracy is actually reasonably respectable. Unfortunately, as always, speed is slow, ECM is none. Turn radius is alright, but with poor stealth you're going to see these things coming and kill them long before they can be effective. Um, an ASR, a couple of anti-ground rocket pods. These things better live up to their name. Because 5 HE and decent accuracy, I don't find this thing to be that impressive. Kahu. Normally an anti-tank plane, this time around... A short range anti air. The TA4S is still the anti tank weapon. TAS, sorry, TA4SU Super Skyhawk. Shrike, it's a seed plane. Tornado ECR still carries the seed weaponry. Tornado GR1, eight 500 kilogram bombs. That's a lot of ordnance. Nice. And finally, Holy bejesus. Hang on, did they change the unit model? What the hell are those? Those must be the MW1 DM12 AT cluster bomb. But look at how many things that carry. KB44 bombs at four and a half thousand of them. Rate of fire, 15,731 rounds a minute. All right, you know what? I'm going to close off this particular video with a demonstration of what exactly that thing can do. Uh, it's a German jet. Cluster everything with an H. I'm going to give uh, just a Fuchs. I want that ridiculously potentially overpowered anti-tank weapon that's going to be my deck uh, cluster everything and for the AI I just need to have them have a simple nothing deck a CV only deck uh, doesn't matter there CV only. All right. I want to see what this thing does against enemy... Well, not so much enemy armor. I'm afraid we're going to have to be using some of our own. 
All right, uh, get over there. Air power. I'm not sure what the air arming range is for these things. Leopard, if you could just stop there in the middle of the crossroads, that'd be lovely. There we go. Tornado. M. W. 1. Here we go. It just dropped everything. Holy shit. And you guys thought an Atacams was bad. What the hell? This looks like it was hit by just a whole bunch of cluster. I mean, this is beyond Atacams or... <laughs> wow. How survivable are these things? Yeah, they're pretty survivable at 40% ECM. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is going to be fun. If you have these things. If you got these things going up against you, oh, good luck. Because that's not going to be pretty. <laughs> that's not going to be pretty at all. You better shoot them down fast. Anyway, that's going to conclude this particular uh, deck review or mod overview for Wargame 1991. I'll link the mod down below in the description. If you have any questions about it, um, let me know down in the comments. I'll try to answer them. But again, I haven't played with this mod yet. I'm just looking around in the armory, seeing what it does, seeing what it well, can do, and what sort of units we can expect. I'll be doing another video soon about the Red Force section, because I think that section also probably has quite a few things to offer. But we'll just see. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you soon for more.